In this video, the Power Technologies mobile phone amplifier, the repeater, the antenna, which is on the back, and the internal antenna, which I've mounted up here. The Victron uh, battery monitor, and because this is probably the end of the road in terms of major modifications to my troop carrier, what of those many things have I learnt to really love and a few things that I probably wouldn't fit to any future vehicles that I might build. I'm Andrew Cynthia White. Join me as I share my passion for building four-wheel drive trucks and then travelling to the remotest parts of the world. This is a perfect example of where the Partech Telecommunications mobile signal amplifier will help me out. I'm camped next to a beach. I have a weak signal. I have three bars at 3G. I don't know if you can see that there. So you launch the Selfie app. It syncs up and looks for the amplifier. It takes a minute or two. You just have to basically set up the system with the phone numbers that will be using it. And then eventually it's giving me there, it's giving me an indication of the network strength, which is pretty low, and the boost work that it's doing. It has gone from three bar, 3G to 3 bar 4G. Can you see that there? It is amplifying the signal and turning often, and it's happened now three times, a 3G signal into a 4G signal. That to me means that it's working. I call that a success. I find it hard to express how amazing a sun visor is like this. It, it's, it keeps the inside temperature incredibly cool, even on the hottest day. It reduces glare by an astonishing amount. It's fantastic. But here's a little word. These are only available for G for, for workmate versions of Troop Carrier 7976 series. Wrong. You can fit them to GXL models, even though the, 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 the Deut dealers won't want to sell you one, because it says workmate only. And it's got something to do with the, the chrome around the windows. We have not used the standard bracketry supplied. We have not drilled any extra holes. That's an original hole. That's an original hole. That's an original hole. That's the original hole. We had to drill that one. That's the original hole. We had to drill that one. No extra drilling in the bodywork. Walking around the vehicle and selecting those things that I think that I absolutely love, I'm tempted to mention the tent conversion, which works so well. But that's I've done that before, so I'm not going to talk too much about a lot of the equipment that I have that I've used on many of my vehicles. I'm still using the camp cover uh, wheel bin because I still think it's the best in the market. What makes the troop carrier limited as an overland vehicle is access to the back. These gull wings solve that problem completely. But in terms of this build, if I think about any piece of equipment on this entire truck, that stand out and that I would want them on whatever I did after this one is firstly the sh hot water shower system developed by Yucky at Quick Pitch which gives me instant hot water and with zero wastage in other words when water comes out it's at the right temperature and if it's not at the right temperature it doesn't come out so there's no fiddling with temperature no water wastage for the shower and of course this is uh, just a fantastic piece of equipment and I absolutely love it. The ensuite shower. 
inside the vehicle there is a 10 litre electric powered boiler and the result is that I can have a shower uh, and it takes me less than a minute to get everything ready and down here there is a temperature sensitive valve and what that does is it combines the water from the boiler and the source water which in this case is my barrel or I could switch it over to the onboard tank and it calculates the temperature absolutely perfectly gone are fiddling with knobs gone is trying to mix cold with warm to try and get the right temperature it's over when it comes to fridges there are three manufacturers that stand above all of the others national luna and in no particular order snowmaster and engel snowmaster of all those three is the best value for money fridge you can get it works every bit as well as both of the others and it's got some other little tricks up its sleeve whatever i do next that's what i want in my truck in terms of bar work i, I still think arb make the nicest looking bars but there are a lot of them that are very very similar um, and i think the quality of their powder coating is not great it scuffs and marks very easily i also i'm not sure if i would do the side bracing here the extra weight i don't know it looks it makes the vehicle also look a bit strange because it's already wider at the front than it is at the back and yeah i'm not convinced yet the wrap this color is a 3m wrap i'm gonna see her in her beautiful greenery in two days time it was a white vehicle has it protected the vehicle and would i do it again i'm gonna do a separate video on it because what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna get a macro camera out i want you to see the plastic and how it's taken the punishment that it's taken but in a word would i do it on my next vehicle it's a no-brainer if i was buying a new vehicle no question about it suspension would i do the same again you know i no i wouldn't and and it's not because this isn't fantastic it's fantastic the bp51s are a very good shock absorber the ride is fantastic but i think i would i think i would like to try something else so i could learn some more uh, maybe a, a, even a higher grade shock absorber to see if there's more of a difference in terms of there's the difference between the bp51s and say a, a standard ordinary gas shock absorber there's a difference there, no question about it and its adjustability is really cool would i do the same again probably not because i'd like to learn something would i go for the same spring set not necessarily because again uh there are things that i would like to try because i'd like to learn but would I? But if I had to build a troop carrier right now and, and just, yeah, I'd put this in. It works really, really well. The Alucab awning. I know of some interesting products being developed at the moment in the Department of Awnings. And so I would wait to see. But I wouldn't automatically run and rush up and just buy another Alucab uh, shadow awning. I like a lot of things about it there are some things that i don't like about it um it's it's good not sure if i would fit another one the quick pitch max tracks bracket and table is probably the single most useful most often used bit bolted to this entire vehicle i would definitely want one again the fact that you can have a table instantly it's fantastic for long trips. Stop off, lunch, there's a table. Just, and it carries the Max Tracks, which are now under the wheels to get my vehicle level. Performance enhancements. Would I do, for example, the unit chip again? No. And I'll tell you why. The clutch isn't big enough on a 70 series Land Cruiser to handle the extra power that can be delivered 
when modifying and putting a performance upgrade such as this. And the warranty question is still hanging and will always hang over the head of this vehicle and any vehicle fitted with a performance enhancing chip. There is no escape. And as far as lighting goes, would I buy the Rigid again? Well, I know how good Rigid are. They are very good, really good. Would I spend the money? I'm not so sure because things like the Road Vision, they're not expensive. Sure, they're not as good as Rigid, but they're a third of the price. I, 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 I'm not convinced that yeah, they're great lights. The rigids are fantastic. But so is that. It works well. The widening of the rear axle. Would I do it again? If I was to buy another Land Cruiser 70 series, yes, I would. Particularly if I was going to tow. A few other things that I must mention. Firstly, lead crystal batteries. They are truly phenomenal. And the beauty of lead crystal is that uh, the batteries themselves uh, are made up with a crystallized electrolyte. Um, and a special absorbing mat um, that makes them uh, much more susceptible to vibration, heat, uh, lower internal resistance so they can accept charge much quicker um, and discharge much slower than a standard AGM. And because Red Arc has now brought out a DC to DC charging system programmed for lead crystal, I wouldn't consider any other type. And my tyre inflation system, the air system, that I've built into my truck is a lot more advanced than I've ever done before. And one of my ideas I'm gonna try out now. I'm not boasting here when I say this is the best air pump installation I have ever seen on a four-wheel drive. I basically went to Yucky and said, can we, as part of the interior, design a place to put the pump? I suggest it here because below it is the, the reservoir, the actual air tank itself and I wanted it there. Could you come up with a solution, please? And this is what he did. I reckon with this system, which includes a tank air reservoir and the dual ARB compressor, I've got to plug it in and I'm going to clear the dust. And the system is truly fantastic. In the video about this truck preceding this one, I failed to mention the chains that I have attached to my mud flaps. And I've had a few people ask me, why would you do that? Well, simply, if I'm off-road and I reverse and a piece of and a rock gets between the wheel tire and this, it's going to rip it off the car. So in very tough off-road conditions, I basically take this and I take a cable tie and I tie it up out of the way. That is the purpose of those chains. This is low technology. Ah, this, <laughs> this, that, that. this one always works. Look at this, whatever. You can break down, you can still polish your vehicle off. Look at that. It does a beautiful job. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> okay, <laughs> we'll let you know. <laughs> when camping, it's a really nice idea to be able to monitor the condition of the batteries because you're running fridges and lights and battery chargers and if you're spending a couple of days at a campsite well how do you know how well your battery is doing this is a Victron battery monitor and I highly recommend it 53.5 percent battery usage we've been here now two days we've been running water boilers a fridge freezer and a cool drinks fridge and lights if I now press these minus or plus button it will then give me different indicators that is now <clears throat> minus 72.4 amp per hour that is the current usage that has come out of the battery a total of 276 watts it's showing a minus there because i have used that power not put the power back so i'm short of that power the current amp draw is minus 23.8 amps. That's mainly due to the water boiler, which is currently on. That in alone takes approximately 20 amps. So current voltage at 11.58 
volts. Many people have said to me, well, why didn't you spend the extra XY dollars and get the one that links directly to your mobile phone? Well, there's a very simple reason why I didn't do that. Because I didn't want to. I find that when I'm in the bush, I like to get away from technology when I can. Not embrace it, more of it. I'm quite happy with coming to the back of my car and looking at it and pressing a button as opposed to getting my phone, finding the phone, running the app. I'm happy to press a button. I'd actually rather not have that technology in my life when I'm camping in the bush. Got that off the rock and we walk around the beach is the best place to get them. Off the beach? Yeah. Oh, okay. Pretty deep there, the water goes straight down. Oh right. Yeah. Okay. And I've got a huge big stinger out, took about an hour to get him off. Really? Sure. Maybe you caught a stinger. Yeah, because yesterday across. yesterday Kate hooked something really big and it just took all the line and yeah. we eventually we just couldn't get it in. We didn't have uh, the Sting tackle was too light. Stingrays, yeah, there's a few few out there. Oh, okay. do you, and it kind of and it, it just seemed sat to sat on the bottom. They go to the bottom they tip go, there. Yeah. Was that? Do you think there. that's what it was? Thing right, yeah. 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 <laughs> the only, only way you can get them off, like there's plenty up Durian Bay. Only way to get them off is really put it and, and keep plucking your line, and it gives them the shits where they ah. lose the expression. But yeah, and in the end they start moving, and then you can get them. Get them up, again. and you get it out. Yeah. Ah. Yeah, they sit there and bury themselves in the sand. Oh, that's what this did. Yeah, no, he just sat and there, just and he'd and move, just, and then yeah. he'd sit. And eventually he'd move, and then I'd get yeah. a bit of gain on him, and then he was off. Bam! You know. Dingra, yeah. Oh. Oh, well, that's in, that's well, that's well, well, thank you for telling us. Around that beach is a better place. It is. Ah, thank you. Thanks. Basically, the, 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 the fish itself, the fillet, there's, the, there's the, the stomach, and everything is here. Okay, so you, so you want to, and the meat, the meat is here, around here, up to the head. 